So now we're thinking about the method, which most methods that come to mind or the two that come to mind usually is a cast based or a cruel based method. Oftentimes we think about those methods as completely opposite from each other. They're not, however, because you could have a system that's kind of a hybrid of the two. Many small businesses, for example, are going to be on a cash based system for their expenses because they pay all their expenses with electronic transfers, for example, and you could set up that easily. But they might be on an accrual basis basically for the revenue because they're in the type of business where they happen to have to invoice the client for work that was done. And so then the question is, can I, can I be in like a hybrid type of method? What kind of accounting method? Maybe there's some method or some accounting trick you could, you know, you use... uh, can I use? Does inventory force me, for example, to use an accrual method versus a cash based method, which is if you have inventory uh, kind of puts a complexity in terms of your decisions on what method to use. Sometimes this one also gets a little bit confusing because when we think about taxes in general, we're usually on a cash based system, right? When we're thinking about our schedule A items, when can I deduct my property taxes or when can I deduct my mortgage interest? Usually it's when you paid it. <laughs> but on the business side of things, normally for large companies, an accrual basis is more accurate than a cash based system oftentimes, but we might have the option for a cash based system, which sometimes is easier to, to account for but it's easier to manipulate a cash based system as well. So, so that's the pros and cons. We'll dive into that a little bit more later. You can see more about it if you want to go to the publication for chapter two. So what must I do if I disposed of business property during the year? Now, business property, we're not talking about inventory. If you're selling inventory or services or something, that's what happens during the normal course of business. But what if I sold a piece of machinery, a forklift or something like that business property? What then, then you've got to deal with the, the, that kind of sale transaction of a fixed asset or something like that. And we may look at that later. And if you want to jump to that, you can look at chapter three. What kind of business income do I have to report uh, on my tax return? So obviously income is basically bad for taxes, right? So the IRS wants to say that you have to report all income unless there's an exception provided by the IRS. So are there any exceptions that we don't have to include in income? And then which kind of things do I have to include in income on the schedule C versus income possibly elsewhere on the tax return? Are there any benefits to have it reported on the schedule C versus some somewhere else and so on and so forth? Uh, you can jump to chapter five if you want to read up on that. We may discuss that more later. What kinds of business expense do I deduct on my tax return? This is obviously the big one because we have, in essence, an income statement for the Schedule C. Income is bad for taxes. Expenses, business deductions are good for taxes. What kind of things can I deduct? Many of them are going to be straightforward. Obviously, the things that you consumed in order to generate revenue are the things you would naturally expect to be deductible in an income tax type system. And the Schedule C makes a lot more sense from that perspective than all the other deductions like Schedule A. Weird. Why do I get to deduct mortgage interest? I don't know. That's what the law says. Why? Do, that's just what the law says. Why do I get to deduct? Uh, why do I get to deduct property taxes and stuff? These are not business expenses that I needed to expend to generate revenue. These are personal expenses. So there's personal reasons the government's trying to influence our behavior for whatever reason they want or lobbyists did something or something to change the tax code. But the business, this, when you talk about the Schedule C, it actually makes sense that you would tax people on the net income. What people had to expend in order to generate the revenue shouldn't be some, you know, you should, should not tax people on their gross income. You should tax them on the net income. So then the question is, what kind of those expenses can we include and which can't we include, which is a huge topic in and of themselves. And we'll go into that in more detail. You can jump to chapter eight if you want to dive into that. Uh, what kinds of expenses are not deductible as business expenses? So then, of course, the inverse, what kind of expenses can't I deduct? And it, obviously, personal expenses start to get things you can't deduct. It gets messy when things are personal and business. What if you traveled for a business, but the business happened to be at Disneyland or something like that? Then you've got, that's where the muddy situation comes in. Again, we'll talk about that later. If you want to jump to it now in the, in the publication, which you can find on the IRS website and read up on it, you can check that out 
on chapter eight. What happens if I have a business of a business loss? Can I deduct it? Now note, the IRS is saying, hey, did you start a hot dog stand? Did you start a, a business of any kind? I saw you start that hot dog. If you made any money, remember that we want part of it. But obviously if you lost money, if you had more expenses than revenue, then the IRS doesn't want any part of your business, right? You would think that's their general standpoint. They don't, they want to, they want to take on the, the gains that you're going to have. They don't want to be responsible for the losses, the risk in the business. So can you deduct losses? Well, you, you could deduct them. Depends. It kind of depends, right? Do you have income to deduct them against? And then there's certain limitations and so on and so forth. The general idea would be that if you have a loss, you can understand the objective or the perception of the IRS would be, we're skeptical of your losses. We want income because we want to take part of your money. We don't want to subsidize you for your losses, unless you're like a giant, like a, like a natural, natural energy company or something like that. Then they'll throw money at you like crazy. But again, for most people, they, they don't want to subsidize the losses. So losses become messy then. So we'll dive into losses more uh, in future presentations. You can take a look at uh, chapter nine if you so choose. If you do have losses, of course, don't be afraid to take them as long as it's a legitimate business. And then, and then you do could get benefits from the losses. Many small businesses have losses when they first start, nothing to be ashamed of, but just realize that the IRS might be skeptical of losses uh, and taking the losses. So you wanna make sure you have the evidence for it. What are my rights as a taxpayer? So we're not going to, we may not dive too much into the, into this, this topic in our presentations, but if you want to jump into it in more detail, chapter 11 on the publication, and then where do I go if I uh, need help with, with federal tax matters, I get, you have some more resources that you could take a look at in the publication. We might not dive into it so much on the presentations here, but if you want to take a look at the publication, that's in uh, chapter 12.